Um, the focus of this show is Guardians of the Galaxy, so I thought we'd start there. Um, you're almost literally the, the grounded or grounding presence in the movie um, as Peter Quill's grandfather. Obviously, you've got a great relationship with James Gunn. You've worked with him a few times. So can you talk about uh, what your experience was like making that particular picture and getting that role? Um, yes, uh, I can talk about that. Um, uh, I got the role because uh, James called up. Uh, you know, because as you say, we have this great history. We did uh, Slither together and we did Super together. And uh, uh, I... I done a bunch of James's stuff. I even did, uh, what was uh, Michaela, Michaela and Rocky uh, about the raccoon. So there's raccoons are a recurring theme in James's work. Um, but uh, so uh, he just called me up. They were, they were shooting already, you know, said, you want to come do this? Uh, and, uh, and I said, sure, I'll come and do it. So they shot in London and I went over and stayed there and uh, uh, to, you know, it is the grounding presence. It's the only sort of human, uh, all human uh, scenes that are in the movie. Um, and uh, wonderful young actor, uh, Peter. And so it was a, it was a good, good time to do the scene. It was fun to play in London. And he had, James had an idea that everybody would, at the end of the picture, sort of have this montage of things. Um, so he wrote this thing in that I was going to do, and so I stayed a couple. I got a couple weeks there, so it was it was pretty nice. Um, they ended up cutting that idea, but it was an idea he came up with sort of on the spot. Um, uh, and, uh, uh, but I got to a couple weeks in London. I got to work with James again. It was fun. So uh, you also recently debuted as Jason Bourne's father. Which is some auspicious DNA you're passing on here, right? Right. right. The, the Quill you know, family, yeah, born Jason Bourne, Peter Quill. <laughs> Come on. So, uh, can you talk about um, working with Matt Damon, but also uh, Paul Greengrass on that film? Um, well, I again, I got that because Paul called up because I did United '93 uh, with Paul Greengrass, and so I'd worked with him before, uh, and he's a brilliant director and also a wonderful guy. Um, so uh, I was, you know, I was excited to go do it. Uh, again, it was a small, smallish part, but I think a pivotal part. And uh, we were uh, around for the big stunt. Well, we, I saw some stuff, but I was not in Vegas. I wasn't in the. Oh stunt. well, yeah. I, I meant, I meant the Vegas. stunt that dispatches your character. <laughs> oh yes, absolutely. We did that. We shot that in uh, Tenerife, here in the Canary Islands. Uh, so uh, the island of Tenerife doubled, doubled for. Greece and double four Beirut, uh, those those two places. So yeah, so the explosion in Beirut and then and then the, uh, the thing in uh, in Greece as well. All the riot scenes. Right. Now uh, you've been associated a lot with villainous roles. We'll maybe talk about that in a minute. But you obviously must be a great guy because you also get ca called back to work with directors all the time, like Brian De Palma, for instance. Yeah. You've been associated with him quite a bit. Um, why do you think you guys clicked so well, and what's a Brian De Palma set like? Well, it's uh, I, I don't know. Good fortune, I guess. Why we clicked so well, I don't. I don't know. Uh, I uh, uh, we just sort of uh, I didn't. The, the first thing I did with him was Scarface, and uh, uh, I got that part because I, I went in and read with Marty Bregman. I went in and read with the producer. Yeah. Marty was on the other side of the desk. <laughs> we read it was one line, how do you do Mr. Montana? He said, okay, great, you got the job. So that's how I got that job. Um, and uh, uh, because I got that job and, and, and Brian knew my work uh, a little bit from that uh, is how I got the audition for Body Double. Yeah. And, uh, and then I went through a series of auditions and a series of old-time screen tests and all of that stuff uh, for Body Double. Um, and, uh, and then once I got that, and, and, uh, and, and I think the movie turned out really well. A lot of critics didn't like it, but, um, but uh, that sort of began the relationship. And the Palma set is a very different kind of set than like a James Gunn set or a Paul Greengrass set. Ryan's very... He likes it extremely quiet on the set. Very particular about the visual images of like 
it's just that's more important than any. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so the shots are all, you know, he's working with cinematography, does his work, and then he goes away. When he's ready, then he comes back, and, and, and then you shoot the thing. Um, but Brian is also, a, he's, he's an old school in a, in a wonderful way that I love, is that he loves to rehearse. When he gets together, he'll rehearse for two weeks before you start shooting. Oh, yeah. Which is unusual. Yeah. Um, so uh, you also, uh, <laughs> to really change gears here, in Star Trek Insurrection, <laughs> you played uh, a Sona, Gallatin, there he is. And uh, that must have been probably... I'm providing visual aids. <laughs> Your, uh, your probably your longest session in the makeup chair of your whole career, I would imagine. No. Ah, hmm, yeah. This was longer. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah it's body double the India. Yeah, yeah. Mostly because there were more thing, more pieces, and it was a. Uh, and it, it had to the be. Whole it looked real, was newer, yeah. right? It was 1983. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So the latex nowadays is much better, much more pliable. The their ability to paint with the airbrush is much. Better. Uh, has advanced. Yeah. So, um, uh, but that was like that was that was four and a half hours. And this guy <laughs> got it down. This one we got down to about two and a half, I think. Huh. Two and a half and three. Uh, and this one, <laughs> for Slither. Yeah. Uh, three and a half. Uh, three. Huh. Around there. Yeah. So uh, you worked closely on that film with F. Murray Abraham and, and Patrick Stewart. Yeah. Um, they would seem to be, on the face of it, maybe rather intense uh, actors. Uh, what, <laughs> what were they like to work with? Well, you know, uh, fine. They're just uh, actors, other yeah. actors. You know, uh -huh. uh, uh, no particular like old uh, intensity uh -huh. sort of things or problems. You know, I mean, uh, F. Murray is a little bit more serious than Patrick. Uh -huh. Um, so uh, you mentioned Body Double, uh, another role that leaps to mind, I think, for a lot of people is Payback. Um, and how do you account for being such a memorable villain? <laughs> what, what do you think it is? Why, why do you think you've registered so much with people as a villain in those roles? Um, I don't know. I mean, it starts with the role. It starts with the script, you know. Yeah. It's a, if you have a good part, you're able to, like, uh, you know, kind of roll with it. Uh, I think with, with Payback, I was able to... Um, this is what Brian told me at one point in time. Mm. Is that I was able to sort of find the, uh, the humorous side to it. I was able to um, sort of well, right now, get some laughs, but also scare people at the same time. So that's kind of, you know, the more sort of duality, the more sort of dimension you can give to the character, yeah. the more fun I think it is for an audience. Yeah. And, uh, so. Good answer, good answer. Uh, now, uh, you also played uh, the BTK Killer. Um, and I wonder what the prep was like for that and what kind of a toll that had on you playing a role that dark. I mean, that's about as dark as humanity gets, right? Yeah, well said. Yeah. It is. It's, it's, it's extremely dark. And, uh, it was, uh, you know, it was, it was hard. It was, it was like exhausting because it was like, it was just uh, uh, this unrelenting sort of evil in this guy. He was just such a... Such a terrible individual, and um, and then, but he had this on the surface life, right? So he had these sort of these two things going because he was the head layman of his church. He was the scoutmaster for the scouts, and you know, meanwhile he was killing people in this vile manner and for his own sexual kicks, right? And um, you know, all the film on him, all the stories, and every every, every sort of thing you read about him, everything you watched about him, it just got worse and worse, and it just became darker. When we shot that movie, was when he, uh, he confessed, and then he did a Dateline interview. Uh, and that Dateline interview aired while we were shooting. And so we saw that Dateline interview, we got all that stuff, and then Stephen K stayed up and did like a 24 hour session Rewrite. and just wrote all yeah. night. Yeah. We wrote that whole sort of confession scene. He, he rewrote that whole confession scene. Much more in the script than it, than it uh, used to, and he made it much more important because we learned so much from that daylight. Yeah. Yeah. So that was kind of that was kind of a, a great thing to observe, and then also to to learn these things about how his mind worked. Yeah. Um, you've had uh, 
an amazing run on television in sort of guest starring roles. Uh, shows like Firefly and Dollhouse, Star Trek Enterprise, 24, uh, Moonlighting. You were in one of the earliest episodes of Moonlighting. Uh, looking back, is there a, a particular show that leaps to mind as being uh, the most memorable or the most interesting set to work on? You mean as a guest star yeah. rather than as a member of the yeah. cast or a recurring member of the cast? Dollhouse, I never knew what that was about. I could <laughs> never figure it out. I kept reading the script, I'm like, I don't get it. Um, <laughs> but, uh, um, but that was, you know, it's a nice set. Uh, I don't know, I think kind of the, the fun one for me recently was Hell on Wheels, where I uh, played Brigham Young yeah. um, in, a, in a few episodes, but it was great to sort of be part of the part of a Western, great to have these uh, wonderful sort of film directors like the old of you coming through, Rob Lurie, yeah. um, and uh, uh, so that was fun, but I, you know, uh, as, a, as a, just a simple guest star, um, uh, you know, uh, I think that Angela Lansbury sort of treated everybody so well. Uh, and, 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 and it was uh, so it was always very nice to get a call to go back there yeah. you know because uh, I did it like I don't know six times I think or seven or something like that but it was always a different character so it was not a recurring thing um, but I uh, you know my favorite shows to work on have been uh, you know probably The Riches uh, uh, Scandal uh, uh, Hell on Wheels yeah. uh, I had a lot of fun with Colin Donnell on uh, Chicago Med uh, yeah. recently. So. All right, well, last question I'll ask you and I'll let you go. Um, is there a, a role that of yours where you feel like, this is really where I did my best work, this is the one I wish people would seek out on home video, and like that represents the, the best of my acting? Uh, that's an interesting question. I, 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 you know, you try to work as, you know, the hard and committed on everything, and, sure. On yeah. everything. So, you know, and then it's how they turn out, right? You know, because you're never quite sure yeah. until you see it. Um, and, uh, but characters that I think are the most memorable uh, and that I'm I'm proud of one for. See, I think Val Resnick and Kay Back is one. And I think Hugh Panetta and The Riches is another. Um, and, uh, uh, those two, I'm, I'm really proud of. I'm very proud. I'm proud of the BTK as well, but it's it's a weird kind of pride, you know. It was like Emmy time, right? And it was awards time. And I talked with all my people. I'm like, I don't want to go there. I don't even want to put my name in the hat, you know. So I, I kind of had this strange feeling about that. A little bad juju on it, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah right. I think it was. Yeah. Well, it's been great talking with you. Hope you enjoy the rest of the weekend. Nice to meet you, Peter.